you doing, Quinn? What are you doing? You don't do this. This isn't now for you, son. Come on. Why this? Because it's what you did. Jesus. Because I did it. Who told you I did it? Cheyenne. Did she? If you're as unhappy as I was, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. And not you. Not my son. You seem like the right thing to do. What is this? At school, a girl? What? No. It's not a girl. What's funny about that? It's like you said. I'm useless. Oh, I didn't mean that. No, I just... I just said that to shake you up a bit. You're topping yourself. Wasn't there anyone you could talk to? Hey, come on, a mate, anybody. I rang the Samaritans. Oh, well, they clearly did a first-class job, didn't they? Mum answered. I recognised her voice. <laughs> of all the luck, eh? Let's get you all. I beat up Steve. Don't you think I guess that's already? I knew it had to be you. I were only trying to help, then you got the blame. No, it doesn't matter. There's nothing that you can do that's so bad that we can't sort it out. Nothing. I moved the body, Dad. You what? I moved my coolie from your flats to the arcade. You did? Ailey rang me on my mobile. How do you know Ailey? She was panicking because he collapsed at her flat. And he looked dead and she knew you'd get in the shit if he were found there. What, so you think you'd move him to the arcade? For safekeeping. I was going to move him early next morning. And that copper knows that. He looks at me and he knows. And he's going to get the forensics. And he's going to say I murdered him when I didn't. No, he's not. I just couldn't see a way out. I'm useless. You know, when I lay down on those railway tracks, I look back now and I think, what was that all about? I would have missed so much. I was like walking out before the end of a film. What if you don't like the film? Well, at least hang around, see as it turns out. Odds on, it's going to get better. Unless you grants in it, in which case you probably are better off topping yourself. <laughs> Don't you know how much what I'm saying is? Tear me apart if you came to any harm. Kill me too. Do you understand me? Yeah. Any problem, any time things are getting too much for you, come to me, understood? This body business at Carlisle, I'll find a way out for you. Don't you worry about it a minute longer. How? I'll sort it, Danny. I promise you. I just dragged my lad off the railway tracks. He was trying to top himself because of what you're putting him through. Danny? Yes, Danny. My lad. Scared out of his wits because he thinks you're going to arrest him. I'm sorry he's taking it so badly. What will it take, Carlisle? What will it take for you to stop hounding the lad? I'm doing my job. You know bloody well Danny didn't do it. Maybe he didn't, but in the absence of any better suspect, I'm duty bound to carry on building a case against him. Who are you going to pick on someone? Pick on me. Is that you telling me I have reason to suspect you? If you like, yeah, why not? So what are you admitting to? What? I can't just suspect you because you've told me to. What exactly are you admitting to? I moved Michael Lee's body to the arcade. 
There. You're happy now. You moved the body? Correct. Why? Because I didn't want the planning people thinking that my future casino hotel was being used as a part-time brothel. Well, let's get you down to the station, get your statement and get you charged. Well, you're making this official. I thought this was off the record. You're man to man. You've just come here and confessed to a very serious crime. Now, why would I want to keep that off the record? Blackpool continues at nine next Thursday on BBC One. Here's a challenge. Write a song about your hometown and you could hear it on Radio 2. Find out more at bbc.co.uk slash Blackpool.